Hello. <coughs> yeah, let's come back to this again. Let's come back to this again. Yeah, so uh, this was my convolution sum. This is my uh, delta function. This is the impulse response. And uh, uh, so suppose you have an input like this. Uh, at uh, 0 I have 0 0.5 and at 1 I have 2. This is my x of n. This is my input. And again this is my h of n. The same thing which I drew here. Now what is what happens if I shift this by 1? h of n minus 1 will look like this. This is shifted by 1. But what does the convolution sum say? When Whenever you shift the h of n, you have to scale it by h of k. Whenever you shift the h of n by k, you have to scale it by h of k. So if you are shifting the sum here, the if you are shifting the h of n here, it has to be scaled by the corresponding value of x at k here. So here k is actually e equal to 1. So the value of the scaling, uh, the value by which this has to be scaled is now 2 because h of 1 is 2. Okay, so this is when k is equal to 1 and this value, this scaled function is actually going to be 2. This one is actually k is equal to 0. Okay, h of uh, x of k into h of n, n minus 0 h of n that is why I have h of n itself and what by how much does this have to be scaled this has to be scaled because it is h of k into h of n minus k so h of 0 h of 0 is 0 0.5 so this has to be scaled by 0 0.5 fine and this is how you compute the value of y of n and it, the sum over, over various values of k is what you get as y of n so the sum of this plus the sum of this is what you get the total value of y of n. So since this is like a continuous time example and it's not very clear, let me just take an example from the textbook which I've actually solved it here. Let's go by go in step by step. So this is example 2.1 from the book. Okay, so My h of n is like this and my this is my unit impulse function, unit impulse response function h of n and this is my x of k, this is my input 0 0.5 and 2, the same input which I took earlier. Right? Bo both, of them, uh, both of these are functions of n. So now uh, when k is equal to 0 we do not shift the h of n because it is h of when you see the convolution sum it is nothing but the uh, n minus k is there here so k is 0 here so there is no shift so my h of n will be here but it will be scaled by x of 0 here in this case x of 0 is 0 0.5 so my h of n now gets scaled by 0 0.5 and then when I shift when k is equal to 1 I shift my h of n by 1 so I shifted it here and it gets becomes 1 2 3 it, it gets shifted between 1, 2, 3 and uh, the value of k, uh, value of x at 2, x at 1 is 2 so this gets scaled by 2 and when you sum it over all values of k which is there in the summation I get my y of n like this so here in essence the y of n is going to be you sum it for various values of k so 0 0.5 plus 0 is 0 0.5 1 plus 2 it gives me 2, uh, I mean like 0 0.5 plus 2 gives me 2.5, 0.5 plus 2 again gives me 2.5, here it is a 0 at 3, uh, in this particular case it's, it's 0 plus 2 will give me 2. Then what follows here? Because after this you see that all the terms are 0, so hence all the terms, uh, all the terms contribute to the sum as 0 here, so there is no more terms. Similarly, on this side also there are there are no other terms by which for various values of k where these two overlap so here also uh, uh, anything less than 0 is 0 so this is my final output y of n which is formed by summing it over k so this is one way to look at convolution by which you have your h of n you keep shifting your h of n and scaling it with the corresponding value of x of k when you shift h of n by k you scale it by 
the corresponding value of x of k and then sum it over various values of k to get the final y of n. So that is one way to look at convolution. Now we will also see another way to do it because this way is fine, there is nothing wrong with it. This is also one very legitimate way of doing it but there is a little more easier way to compute convolutions especially while doing in doing with hand. So we will see that in a few minutes.